just look at when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you? Or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the ruler will answer you, Truly I tell you, just as you did it for one of the least of my sisters and my brothers, you did it for me. This is the gospel of hope. be seated. Before I get into the Word this morning, I do want to express my appreciation to the church staff as they took care of business last Sunday. Uh, when I was in St. Louis preaching for one of our uh, sibling congregations, the Metropolitan Community Church of Greater St. Louis, it's always a joy to be invited to preach uh, at somebody else's uh, church. As you know, um, I guard the pulpit pretty uh, heartily here at Cathedral of Hope, and uh, I thought Reverend Aaron did a fabulous job last Sunday. And uh, I was invited to preach their stewardship sermon, um, so of course I had to uh, uh, chase up with the uh, senior pastor uh, saying, thank you, give me the sermon about money. Really appreciate that. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to make sure that I don't bring stewardship back to Cathedral of Hope, but of course if you've not filled out your pledge yet, you're more than welcome to do so. Let's call together a prayer. Let's pray together. <laughs> God, you are so gracious and so kind, we are grateful to be able to sit in your presence and to represent the very best of who you are in each and every one of us. So open our hearts and our minds now, O God, so that your Holy Spirit may speak to us once again on this Sunday and give us food for our journeys so that it would sustain us in practicing what we preach. Live within each and every one of us, God. Know that we are made in your divine and loving image, and it is into that loving and divine image that we now rest, so that we might hear you and that we might be you. And now, loving God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the living Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. So today we close out the series of sermons that we've been preaching throughout this November season uh, called Remembering. And during this season, we have been doing some remembering of certain groups within our world and within our communities and within our own lives. We've been remembering the, the call to action that each and every one of us is called to as we live into this experience of Christianity. I call it an experience of Christianity because Christianity is not about a set of rules or dogmas. Christianity is about living into the experience of who Christ is, living into that experience of faith that so shaped those early believers, living into the experience that those disciples experienced as they walked alongside Jesus. It's a lived experience that each and every one of us gets to make a decision about every time that we wake up, every time that we have breath, every time that we make a positive action in the world. It's a living into an experience of Jesus the Christ who is alive and who is well and who is with us today as we too live into the gospel and the message of Jesus the Christ. That is the good news of the Jesus that we worship, that each and every one of us is called to live into that experience, to make it our own. 
and in making it our own, breathe it like new life into the world that we walk and live and have our being. Today is Christ the King Sunday, and Christ the King Sunday makes itself present right before we start the season of Advent. You might ask ourselves, why on earth do we celebrate Christ the King Sunday just before we're about to experience the goodness and the richness of the Advent series? Well, I believe that we call ourselves on this Sunday to be reminded of who it is that we are going to be worshiping over the next four Sundays, who it is that we are welcoming into the world, who it is that we are appointing as that which is sovereign, that which is ruler, that which is our God. Who is this one that we come to worship? Because if you're anything like me in the season of Advent, especially in the Christmas season, the story has been so much wrapped in such romantic style that it's hard to cut through the romance of the Christmas story into the real nitty-gritty of who Jesus is. This Sunday gives us an opportunity to be mindful of remembering who Christ is and remembering that we have been called to be Christ-like in all our ways. So that when we get caught up in the story of the stable, in the story of the babe that came into the world wrapped in swaddling clothes and didn't cry at all, <laughs> when we get caught up in the story of the wise ones and the shepherds and the angels singing glory, glory, hallelujah, we're able to be reminded that when we come to worship this Jesus, it's not a Jesus of, of wrapped in swaddling clothes. It is a Jesus who grew to be the one who would give us salvation. The Jesus who grew to be the one that would turn the world upside down. The Jesus who grew up to be that itinerant preacher that called out for justice. That Jesus that turned the tables upside down in the temple courts when people were being hypocritical about who they said that they believed in. That Jesus who was a rebel rouser. That you and I have come to be Christ-like in all our ways. That we might embody that sense of Christ who is King. Not king in the earthly sense. Not king in that sense who has rule over. We so often think about Christ the King as someone who is sat up on a big throne and who is watching over us and disciplining us. Not the Christ the King who would be having power or dominion over us, but a Christ the King who comes as that servant leader who gets down on his feet, on his knees before us and whops, washes our feet on that season of Maundy Thursday. Christ the King is this one who encourages us also to be servant leaders, to serve the world in the same way that Jesus served. In our readings today, we heard from the famous saint and prophet, Mother Saint Teresa of Alvila, who, who talked about how, how Christ has no hands but ours, no feet but ours, no heart but ours, no voice but ours. And she reminds us that if we are truly to become Christ-like in all of our ways, that we too are called to embody those values of Jesus, the values of compassion and kindness, the values of, of joy and hope for tomorrow, those values that will minister to the world that is without and to call us to action and justice to put the world right again. It is that Jesus that calls us to speak our truth to power, that calls us to lift up the, the roles of women within our society and within our community to speak for the voiceless and to be about a people of justice and compassion and kindness for the world. Difficult things to happen, especially on the day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday when everyone else is out in the shop trying to get the thing that you've been trying to get for the rest of the year. Compassion, kindness, those gifts that Jesus offers to us are the gifts of Christ the King, not ruling over but being with us. That's why we call the Emmanuel the, the God with us, not God over us but a God with us, embodied in us, living through us. That's why it's a living into this sense of Christianity, 
not accepting it just as a set of rules or a set of dogmas. Everyone can live by a set of rules or by a set of dogmas. But those who are truly called to be Christ-like in all of their ways are called to embody it in their actions. For Jesus said, when I was naked, you gave me clothes. When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When, when I was in prison, you came and visited me. And those who thought that they could live by rules and regulations and dogmas challenged Jesus and said, when did we do any of these things? And Jesus said that whatever you did to the least of these, you did to me. So that when we speak for justice, when we speak out against the hypocrisy of the world, when we stand against toxic religion, when we stand in the footsteps of Jesus, we are doing it to the very least of these. We are being Christ-like in all of our ways. That's what the call of faith is. The call of faith is not an easy road. It's not a road that's, that's paved with, with, with gold. It's not a, a road that's paved with, with, with rose bushes that are laid before us. It's a road that's difficult sometimes. When you have to speak that truth to power, when you have to raise up the issues of our world, when you hear in the pastoral prayer, and I know that some of you think that sometimes the pastoral prayer is a quick trip around the world and what's going on. But we need to hear what's going on in the world in which we live. We sometimes get lost just in our own little world, our own little state, sometimes in our own little community. But if we are called to be Christ-like in all our ways, we have to confront the systems of oppression in our world so that the world might finally become the place that Jesus created in the very first place. We call ourselves as a people of justice, reclaiming Christianity as a faith of extravagant grace and relentless compassion. The ways of Jesus to be Christ-like in all our ways is truly to embody that presence of Jesus in our everyday actions that impact the world. You might have noticed over the last few weeks we've been talking a lot about the way in which Cathedral of Hope impacts the world. We impact the world in so many different ways. I can't imagine what those 1,640 people felt on Thanksgiving Day when they received a basket from us and they were able to receive lunch for themselves on that day, perhaps some who had not eaten for the rest of that day or even for the week. I remember last, last year when I was here and my car was not parked in the middle of the forecourt. <laughs> I remember last year watching with awe and amazement at all of those individuals and organizations who came past and who received from us, and the gratitude and the generosity and the blessings that whatever you did to the least of these, you did unto me. We fed Jesus on Thanksgiving Day, siblings in Christ. We fed Jesus. Those acts of kindness and those acts of grace are things that we should embody in our lives every single day, not just on Thanksgiving. This Christ the King that we honor and that we worship is a Christ who calls us into the lowly places of the world and to reach out with the hands and with the feet and with the heart of Christ. It is our commitment to be followers of Jesus, not a follower of, of someone who wants to rule over, but someone who wants to be with us, to encourage us, to bless us, and to love us. It is that Christ that we honor this day on Christ the King, and we do it by remembering to be Christ-like ourselves. We do it by making Christ real in our lives. We do it by affording ourselves the blessing and the generosity of being kind and compassionate with one another. Kind and compassionate with the world. And kind and compassionate with yourself. I invite us as we close out this season of remembering, as we remind ourselves once again of whose shoulders we stand on and as we encourage ourselves to embody this, this compassion of Christ into our everyday actions of the world, I encourage us to remember that as we enter into the season of Advent with all that it will encompass, the shopping, 
the table talks, the opportunities to be with friends and to find gatherings, the opportunities to be alone and to sit with our faith. I encourage us to remember what the reason for the season is of a Christ child who was born into the world and who grew up just like any one of us, but embracing what God had called upon his life, turned the systems of oppression upside down and called us into a new world, a holy world, so that every moment of our lives we might stand on holy ground, honoring the Christ who is within us. Happy Christ the King, not a king who's over, but a Christ who is within. God bless you. Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen. At this time in our worship service, we ask everyone to please record your presence in the red registration tablets that are in your pews. And if you're visiting with us for the first time, a reminder to once again stop by the Ministry and Visitor Center by the Connect Care and Grow signs. We would love to meet you and also give you a gift. As we prepare to receive our tithes and our offerings and our gifts today, we know that giving is a spiritual practice. It makes a difference in our lives, just as God makes a difference in our lives.